month of February is here, and, and now we start the second half of conference play. And, and as everyone can see in the conference, it's still, you know, Auburn's got a pretty uh, pretty good lead, but uh, there's still a lot of basketball we play. And you can see the parity that we talked about. Our league is, is very, very competitive this year, whether you play at home or on the road. And so we're looking forward to playing against an LSU team that really came in and, and really <clears throat> kind of took us to the uh, beat us for the most part. They, they play awful well, and, and we didn't play uh, very well. So we're looking forward to uh, putting on a better showing. And uh, from all phases of, uh, from from an energy standpoint, from a defensive mindset, uh, uh, and offensively uh, executing uh, much much better. Uh, I think we're a much better team than we were at that point in time, and and hopefully we'll put it on display. So, uh, but LSU is a team that they just played last night. Uh, I think they lost a, a game to Tennessee. They were shorthanded, but we know when uh, when they're playing at the Maverick Center that it's going to be a when the Hogs and the and the Tigers play. It's going to be a, a heck of a ball game. So uh, we're looking forward to hopefully getting uh, on the road and going playing well on the road for for 40 minutes. I thought the A&M game. I thought we played well for the first 30 minutes. Uh, defensively, we did the things we wanted to do. Uh, <clears throat> we forced tempo. We created. Uh, chaos on the defense, and in the second half, they came out and made a bunch of threes, and it kind of put us back on uh, on our heels, and, and we didn't respond the right way. So, uh, so it's another opportunity for us to get better, and uh, it's a nine-game season, and that's how we're gonna we see this as we move forward. Yeah, Mike, um, you know, in, in your SEC opener, I think Darius only played three minutes, had some turnover issues, and the other night he plays 35, has 13. Point seven boards. I know he's had some other good games for you. Just how far has he come since that, since that Tennessee game? What do you think happened to him against Tennessee, and then how has he progressed since then? I, I think it's just a natural progression of you know having an opportunity to play, play minutes, and getting experience, and uh, and playing with confidence. I think that that's the key, and that, that that is the bright spot that we talk about as we move forward. We got more guys now that are more ready to to help us, and 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 that's been a great example of, of Darius coming out. Uh, uh, Trey Thompson, we've seen him start to emerge, uh, even as a guy that can score uh, more for us. Uh, we we got to continue to have other guys step up. And uh, C.J. Jones, he, he was sick the other night. I don't know. Uh, matter of fact, he didn't even practice before the day before the A&M game, so he was real sick. So uh, hopefully we'll have him back and uh, and get our bench going. This is the time of year again as our team start putting all the pieces together. We start playing some of our better basketball. And uh, so we got to have other guys that <clears throat> uh, who, who hadn't had that experience. All of a sudden, they've had that experience now, and they can, they can go out and they can perform and help us uh, perform at a high level. Is this one where revenge is a little bit of a motive just because the game was so bad here to, to have a rematch with them? Well, we just play so bad, by, uh, Nate, and that's to me. On, on my, that's got to be the first thing on our guys' mind. I thought we were uh, we were flat. I mean, that, that's the bottom line. I mean, they came out and, and went up 20 points in the first half, and we hadn't lost a game here. At, uh, I don't think this year have we, and uh, that's the only game we've lost. So, uh, but it's also an opportunity for us to, to to get better. I mean, we're still in the hunt for something. I don't know what it is, but we're in the hunt, and. Uh, I want to see us put together 40 minutes. And, and the way that's going to take place is that we got to have all all our players on deck. And that means our forwards have really got to start stepping up. we got to get Daniel involved. we got to get uh, uh, Trey. Uh, we got to get him involved. we got to get Dustin Thomas involved, Orlando Cook. And that means it ain't necessarily just the scoring, but we got to have some scoring for those forwards. And uh, in the A&M game, that was very, very absent. And so now everything just kind of – it rests on the perimeter players, and so. Uh, but playing LSU, it's a, it's a rubber match. Somebody we play every year, home and home, and uh, it's a big game. It is a big game. First game in February, and uh, February is where you start kind of separating yourself. Also, to really penetrate that defense last time, and and uh, also Epps. Just what do you do the second time around against them? We've got to do a better job of being in place. I, I thought our defense wrote, uh, you know, our, our defense of help side was not very good at that point in time. And hopefully that's something we've addressed where we've gotten better at it. Our help side and and knowing that you know the penetration is going to come. So we got to build a wall and make them kick it out to those shooters and and be in position where we can test those shots and rebound the basketball. Coach, halfway through the SEC season, what's your assessment of where this team is right now? 
I, you know, I, I, I really thought we'd be a little further along than where we are. Uh, you know, we played the A&M game, and, and we've been really good about taking care of the basketball. And I thought in that game, the turnovers were a big, uh, a big factor in that game. Uh, uh, I just still think this team hadn't played its best basketball yet, uh, although we've added some other guys that are starting to play at a pretty good level. And the one thing that I'm, I'm really kind of uh, not necessarily uh, uh, I'm wondering about is that forward position. You know, the consistency. You know, we saw the other night against Oklahoma State, those guys came in and gave us some great minutes. Dustin Thomas, Orlando Cook, uh, uh, Trey Thompson. They gave us some really good minutes. And then, of course, then we go play at A&M and the, the missing in action. So we got to have some, some consistency, uh, you know, for our basketball team. And that, that, to me, is the most important thing. And, and continue to uh, – I, I feel like we need to score more. I think our defense has, has been much improved. And now I think we got to really start getting some, some transition, uh, easy buckets, and, uh, and get an inside presence. And that's – that means Daniel's got to touch the basketball. Mike, following up on, on, on Darius, I mean, how do you think his freshman season's gone? Has he surprised you? Just what, what, what do you like about what he's doing? How would you assess his, his season, how he's played of late especially? I always talk about, you know, what he brings to the table. He's a guy that's a glue guy, can do multiple things, athletic. He's 6'5". He can rebound, block shots. Uh, uh, he does a great job of playing without the basketball. Uh, uh, and I think he's progressed pretty nicely. You know, one thing about freshmen, you let them go at their own pace. And I think we saw him go, you know, a couple steps forward and take a couple steps backwards. And so, but now his confidence is, is really, really, really high right now. And he's playing, as you alluded to, he played 35 minutes the other day. I don't even think he missed a shot. Uh, and, and just he, he's learning how to, to go out and, and leave it on the floor. And I think that's uh, – that's a big plus for us, and, and not only that, he can pass the basketball. So uh, he continues to get better, and that's that's what we expect. Uh, you know, our, our kids they develop, and, but the only way you're going to develop is through practice and have an opportunity to go out and play. And when you have that opportunity to go out and play, you perform, and he's doing it. Yeah, how about his defense? Because I think you probably initially probably wanted to play him because it was a defense. How's he handling that? Side? I think he's done well. I, I think he's done well. I think he's now learned how not to. To, to use his feet as opposed to his hands. You know, early on he was using his hands, and he was he was actually getting in foul problems. And I had a lot of foul problems, but now I think he's moving his feet, and I think he's reading. Uh, he's really good at coming in and deflecting a lot of passes, touching balls, and and coming up with them. And he's a, and we've seen him in the open floor. He's a great finisher at the basket. Um, so with Daryl Macon having the most uh, SEC Player of the Weeks in program history now. How, does, how do you feel seeing one of your players thrive like that? And also, how does the team feel? And he, how, how do you think he feels about it? Well, I'm sure, you know, uh, I'm sure Daryl would sacrifice, you know, team goals for individual goals. But I think it just tells you, you know, the things that we're doing is, 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 is help putting him in a position where he can, you know, receive those kind of accolades. And it could be him. It could be Barford. It could be Daniel Gafford. Uh, but I think the key is that, it all goes hand in hand with winning, and so that, that's the most important thing. And uh, hopefully, uh, I'm glad to see Daryl out there playing. He's out there having fun. He's not playing frustrated, uh, playing the game the right way. I guess with, with uh, Bailey, is he back in rotation this week? Or? Yeah, he got a chance. Yeah, he got a chance to play. Yes. Yeah, I mean that's like I said, based on what he does in practice. Yeah, Mike. I think LSU's one and five since they won here. That, that, you know, they played great. They apparently haven't played that well since then. What, what, what are you seeing from them since, since you played them the first time? Well, it's, it's a team that you know the, the young basketball team. Although Reed is, a, he, he's a senior, and Epps has been around for a while. Uh, uh, but they hadn't shot the ball well. When you don't shoot it well, that's what takes place. You know, we we didn't we didn't shoot away we didn't shoot it well against A and M, and look what happened to us. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> but it's a team that, you know, they obviously they play much better at home. You know, they've had some games where – been some close games and there have been some not-so-close games. So that's, that's a sign of a young team. And uh, But but I know they'll be ready to play when we come in there. You know, usually if teams are going to split, you think, well, they'll, they'll each win at home. They've already won here, but do you feel good you guys can, can get the split by, by winning there? Well, that's the mindset, Bob. What, what, well, I'm not doubting your sincerity. What, what, what makes you feel that way? We got a good basketball team. When Daryl, when Daryl comes off the bench, it feels like the team performs better. Does that 
ring true for you? I mean, his, his numbers are much higher overall, and the team has a better record when he comes off the bench. Is that kind of why you bring him off the bench, or do you just think this having him second? <laughs> he's played well. I, I mean, he's played well coming off the bench. He's played well starting, uh, you know. Uh, so the, the good thing about it is it's about the playing time. It's about starting or, or finishing it because I think even last game, he set that probably for about – two minutes and he was in the game. So whether he starts or, or not, uh, he's have an opportunity to finish. And, and I think that's the key is that he's playing at, at a pretty good level. You know, obviously it gives us some balance uh, from that standpoint, but, uh, but who knows, he could be starting the next game. Uh, he, he's important in what we're doing. And, and as we get ready to go down this last stretch drive, we're going to need all hands on deck. We're going to need guys playing at a high level, efficient level, uh, defensively, offensively, uh, as we jump into February. Anything else? I forgot, but I think there's a bunch of teams clustered in there at four and five. And even Auburn in that far ahead. I mean, just, just where do you feel about how, how bunched up everybody is? Well, that's the first thing I said. It's so competitive in this league, Bob. It, it's, it's uh, uh, I mean, we saw it, you know, uh, coming into from the non-conference schedule, how teams were playing and, and the strength of schedule. And so it, it makes uh, even more so an interesting uh, race in, in, in the conference race. And so that's why I said these nine next nine games are, are going to be very, very important in, in what takes place uh, in the SEC tournament and beyond that. Uh, uh, but, but it's, like I said, it's just parity and you know, good coaches, good teams. And... Uh, the team that gets hot at this time, I think that's the teams you got to watch out. Uh, obviously, Auburn has played well early on, uh, but you got some teams that are really starting to pick it up. I think Tennessee continues to play at, at, at a high level, but it's each night it's a different a different team. We saw two teams last night. I think lose at home, and so whether you play at home on the road, it, it does not matter. You you got to bring it, and uh, that's that's a sign of good things for for the SEC and in the conference. That is.